from Montana's News Leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. Some 30 Yellowstone County inmates who tested positive with COVID-19 last week are just days away from being moved out of isolation and back into the jail's general population. But first, inmates will have to get clearance from the jail's 24-7 medical staff as they continue to monitor cases and symptoms at the detention facility. This all after a male inmate tested positive last week, prompting the county to test 70 other inmates in that unit. 30 tested positive and were moved to isolation. However, long before the outbreak happened, the Yellowstone County Sheriff feared a spike in COVID-19 cases could be coming to his jail as that virus started to take off. And although staff at the Yellowstone County Detention Facility can segregate the inmates who test positive, overcrowding in Montana jails remains an issue. As MTN's Andrea Lutz reports, it's a problem that likely won't go away even when the virus does. When the Montana Supreme Court asked judges across Montana to release nonviolent inmates from Montana jails to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in March. I think we were down to about 330 to 340 inmates at one time. Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder had an instinct the virus would show up in his jail anyway. We knew those people would be coming back, at least some of them. We anticipated what was going to happen and we prepared for it. The staff prepared by closing off sections of the jail to use for the sole purpose of quarantine, a move they made all the way back in March. Back then, Montana Supreme Court Chief Justice Mike McGrath said due to the confines of jails, it would be virtually impossible to contain the spread of the virus. We kept room available for isolation. Uh, we kept room available for quarantine and that's what we're doing now. The, the problem is the numbers continue to grow. An unforeseen consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic that's impacted capacities at jails, a spike in domestic abuse cases. Well, probably because of the lockdowns and you know a lot of people staying at home, they go to jail and, and we don't make the decision that, well, we're not gonna put them in jail because of the overcrowding. They, they end up in jail and we make room for them. In just a few short months, the jail's capacity has grown once again to numbers in the 500 inmate range. We're crowded and, uh, and we're dealing with it. 80 of those inmates are Department of Corrections holds. And while overcrowding is an issue in most Montana's jails, Linder says those inmates will not move anytime soon, especially with new COVID cases. We pretty much anticipated that that was going to happen and you know we weren't sure if we were going to get another um, spike in uh, COVID activity in the jail or not. Um, but, but we've got a great staff down here. They do a good job. We've got 24 hour medical and so they're able to keep an eye on things and manage it and that's what we do. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Thanks, Andrea. Today's inmate capacity at the jail is roughly 480. Linder also tells us when COVID impacts the jail, each inmate is tested. Another COVID related death in Stillwater County, bringing the state's total to 98. Active COVID-19 cases are up to nearly 1,700 now. There have been more than 6,800 confirmed cases and close to 5,000 recoveries. Dozens of coronavirus cases are now linked to the Sturgis motorcycle rally in South Dakota. There are more than 100 cases across eight states, including Montana and Wyoming. Nine people testing positive in Wyoming. Montana's numbers aren't released. School just getting underway today in Hardin, and already there's a positive case. In a letter to the community, Hardin Superintendent Eldon Johnson said a very small number of teachers and students last had contact with the infected student on Monday. Bighorn County Public Health will follow up with close contacts to give instructions about isolation and quarantine. In the Billings Public Schools, administrators are anticipating that at some point students will become infected with the virus. What the public will learn about any possible case is all up to the Yellowstone County Health Department. Billings School Superintendent Greg Upham said today that initially, Riverstone Health may only release a round number of students infected across the district. We won't necessarily know the particular school or classroom where the positive case came from due to school and health privacy laws. However, if the health department starts closing individual classrooms or entire schools, it's possible officials would make a public statement about the closure. That doesn't mean that, you know, if school Z, high school school Z has a multitude of cases that, that Mr. Felton and Riverstone Health may say that 
in school Z, we're experiencing, you know, 28 cases or whatever. And so therefore we've taken this action. He hasn't said they'll do that, but it kind of follows suit into what, what reporting there has been prior to. Part of the responsibility to keep schools COVID-19 free falls on parents. If a student is showing any sign of illness, the district asks that student be kept home and taken to the doctor. Well, have you voted or have you noticed, I should say, for those vote yes public safety signs popping up across Billings? They're reminding voters about the city's public safety mill levy election coming up next month. Those mail-in ballots get mailed out on Friday. Q2's Jay Cohn breaks down the choice for voters and what's at stake for the city. It's the election no one is thinking about. Before the big national election grabs all the attention, Billings voters will consider a public safety mill levy that helps fund the city's police, fire, and 911 services. Because of COVID-19, this is not the conversation about adding resources to really drive down crime rates, reduce response time. This is really about retaining kind of the status quo and not sliding backwards. City Administrator Chris Kokulski was not in Billings in 2014 when the city's last public safety levy went down to defeat. But he knows it was close, within a thousand votes. And Kokulski hopes this time around will be different. I wish I could say it, we could do that with less people, but this is a people business. All right, somebody dials 911, they want a human being to show up for their emergency. If they're a victim of a crime, they expect someone to take the time and work them through the criminal justice process and hold whoever the perpetrator is accountable. And it just costs more today than it did 15, 16 years ago when the voters approved the current levy. Budget-wise, the city's police and fire departments still rely on funding from a 2004 levy that raises $8.2 million per year. The city wants to repeal that fixed amount levy and replace it with one that collects 60 mills worth of property taxes. So the voters say, no, we'll continue to collect the 8.2 fixed amount. If they say yes, we'll go 60 mills. And as our tax base grows, we will bring in more money to help deal with the increased cost of public safety. Bottom line for taxpayers, the proposed levy will cost $475 a month for a median home worth $212,000, $57 a year. Kukulski hopes taxpayers will recognize a wise investment when they see it. It's an investment worth looking into. You know, public safety has a significant impact on the value of our assets, homes, businesses, properties. So to be able to continue to do what these two departments do for us um, is important. The bottom line for the city is the cost of paying for public safety is going up each year while the city's ability to pay for it is stuck at 2004 funding levels. Thursday, we'll hear from Police Chief Rich St. John and Fire Chief Bill Rash to get their perspective on public safety in Billings. I'm Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. Thanks, Jane. Tonight at 7, city officials will discuss the public safety levy at Amen Park near the gazebo. The presentations are happening in each ward of the city so voters can learn about and ask questions about the proposed levy. Thursday night's forum is set for North Park. That will also start at 7 o'clock. The economic downturn in Wyoming has forced Governor Mark Gordon to cut $250 million out of the state budget. Gordon says the cuts are difficult and there are more coming. The Department of Health will see a $90 million cut, including programs that assist low-income residents and senior citizen services. Higher education will be cut by $67 million, $42 million from the University of Wyoming, $25 million from community colleges, another $23 million will be cut from the Department of Corrections. 274 state jobs were also cut today. The governor of Wyoming is required to balance the budget each year. Up next on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, why a special five-year-old Foresight boy who loves Iron Man is being called a hometown superhero. And in sports, college football fires up Saturday. Scott lets us know who's playing. Has the latest from Bozeman with Cats All-American candidate Lewis Kidd. Well, thunderstorms in the forecast, some of them might actually contain some decent rainfall. Yes, the forecast coming up in just a few minutes.